Welcome to Quiver Financial's What You Need to Know About Medicare. I'm Colby McFadden, and I'm joined with a special guest, Chris Frasca. Good longtime friend. Chris, welcome. Thank you for having me, Colby. Excited to get into everything Medicare today. Good, good. Well, Chris, a little background on Chris. Chris is an independent insurance agent. He's been helping over 600 different families over the last seven years. Is that right? 600 different people yeah. that you've helped navigate the na the big questions of Medicare. Yeah, it's very confusing. There's a lot of different options, especially in California. So helping people navigate through that transition from work and into Medicare and every other situation that might come up. Awesome. All right. Well, great, Chris. Well, let me, uh, there's your little bio for everybody who needs to know a little more about Chris. I've known Chris for a number of years. He's a family friend um, at Quiver Financial. There's not only just a quiver of arrows that we use as investment products, but we also have a quiver of experts. Chris is one of our quiver of experts because he specializes primarily in Medicare, whereas Quiver Financial, we do the master plan and we focus on investment management. We like to go to experts like Chris, who really focus on one thing like Medicare, especially when it's as confusing as Medicare can be. So let's get into that because well, the goal of this video is to give everybody just the basics, kind of high level 101, what's Medicare, what does it cost? What kinds of plans are available for people? And then what should you think about when you're trying to determine the types of Medicare plans that people can choose? So, Chris, you know, one thing that we always talk about with our clients, and, and I've been in this business 25 years helping people with their money. Yeah. And when I started, I had no idea how expensive health care could be. And over the years, we've had clients that have spent anywhere from zero because they had no health problems in retirement and clients that have spent up to over $750,000 of their savings. And so when Fidelity says, hey, the average American, the average 65-year-old American in the year of 2023, last year, may need $315,000 of after-tax money. Because imagine, if all your money's in your 401k, and you got to pull it out to pay medical expenses, and it's 300000 you need, once you add the taxes in, you may need more like 500000 so this is the reason why we really encourage everybody to think about medical, Medicare and health care planning and retirement because it's the number one bogey in people's expense management as they age. And a lot of times what we get from clients when I ask them and when we're doing their plan, I say, well, you know, what, what do you have for medical insurance? A lot of them go into Medicare under the idea that, oh, I don't need any insurance. I've got Medicare. It covers yeah. everything, right? And then something happens in life, and they find that that's not the case. So that's why it's important to plan and understand what Medicare does and doesn't cover. So, Chris, would you give us a little idea of just the basics of Medicare? Like what is plan A, B, C, these things that people hear about um, as simply as possible? Yeah, sure. Okay. And like Colby said, this is going to be kind of a brief overview. It's not going to be comprehensive, but we have to know the basics in order to understand why we need Medicare, what options we have in Medicare, and why we would choose those options. So when we look at Medicare and what we call original Medicare, it's part A and part B. So Medicare part A is your hospital insurance, as it says on your Medicare card. Mm -hmm. What I like to think of it as your inpatient insurance. Whenever okay. you're admitted as an inpatient, whether it be the hospital, a skilled nursing facility, or even some parts of home health, part A is what's going to cover you. So part A is premium free for most people. So as long as you or your spouse paid their taxes for 10 years and earned a total of 40 credits with Social Security, Part A is going to be premium free for you. So meaning you won't have to pay for Part A. Gotcha. So whether or not you're going to join Part A or want to join Part A when you turn 65, maybe you're still working, maybe you aren't, either way it will be free. So it's usually always a good idea to get Part A. There's only a few situations when it's not. And if you fall into one of those situations, like having an HSA account, you can talk to somebody like me and I can walk you through that process. Okay, perfect. So, so part A, basically everybody gets as long as you've been employed, paying into the em uh, payroll tax system for, let's say, 10 years. It's very similar to the qualifications for Social Security. Yeah. You have to have a certain number of quarters of earnings type of situation. Um, and then you can also opt out is what I hear you say if you wanted to. But that would 
doesn't sound like it would be necessarily a great idea. Yeah, it's usually not a great idea. A and B are optional. A lot of people think that you have to enroll into it. Part A is completely optional. But like I said, there's very few cases where you shouldn't enroll in it. Sure. It is free. You've paid for it your whole life and earned it. You might as well enroll into might it. Might as well get it. Okay. So, and that covers everything, anything that's inpatient. So if you're admitted into a hospital or skilled nursing, like you said, so so the process of admission is basically what triggers that. So if that's if the inpatient is part A, what, what does part B cover? Yeah. So part B is, it's on your card, it will say medical. I like to think of it as outpatient. This is going to make up, you know, 90% of your day-to-day stuff. This is doctor visits, specialist visits, um, ambulance, emergency room, urgent care, even surgeries, and even being overnight at the hospital under observation is still considered outpatient. You have to be admitted to be inpatient. So Part B is going to cover all of that and actually a whole lot more. Part B does have a monthly premium, okay. so you will be paying per month for Part B. Medicare is going to look at whatever your income was from two years prior to determine your premium for this year. Got it. So if we look at 2024, Medicare is going to go back and look at whatever you told the IRS as your modified adjusted gross income for that year. That's going to determine your premium for 2024. Okay. So let's average that out for somebody who's like, let's say most of the people probably hearing this are in Southern California. Mm -hmm. And let's say their average earnings, let's say it was $150,000 a year, a married couple. And maybe as a married couple, it's over 200. Yeah. What do you think the average premium is this year for Part B for people? Yeah. So the premium for Part B has a a base rate. It's $174.70. So that's what we start at. If you get up into the next income bracket, it goes up about $70 for that income bracket. So average, like you said, in Southern California, we're a little bit higher income earners. So if you're over 200, you'll pay about $250 a month. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So that's, uh, that's some good things for people to realize is that with Part B, that premium is income adjusted. So as you're going into retirement, if you can try and bring down your taxable income as much as possible, you might be able to save yourself on some Medicare uh, expenses as well. Exactly. It's usually those first few years after retirement, or maybe you're still working and you have Medicare that you'll see those higher premiums. When we get to retirement, usually you'll come back down. Okay, interesting. And then, you know, you you hear about Part C or what they call Medicare Advantage, and that's where a lot of our clients get confused. They go, well, Part A and Part B, that's regular, normal Medicare. That's what I got. Well, what's this Part C or this Medicare Advantage plan that they hear about? Yeah, so when we look at Medicare A and B, it's really basic coverage. It's not meant to be comprehensive, and it never was meant to be. So before Medicare Advantage was a thing, we only had the other option, and it's quite expensive, and it wasn't for everybody. So Medicare came out with Part C, or Medicare Advantage. Mm -hmm. This was meant to be a more cost-effective option to get coverage for Medicare through private insurance companies. So rather than having A and B be your first insurance, you choose a private insurance company to now be your insurance. Usually it's some form of managed care or an HMO or a PPO. Okay. It's going to be very similar to mo- what most people are used to coming off of employer coverage or individual coverage. Okay. So this is like where people who have A and B, the, the uh, normal or what, how would you phrase that? Just uh, original t- Medicare. Original Medicare. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they've got the red and white and blue card. If you're a uh, Medicare Advantage, then what you're, you're probably getting something from the provider like Aetna or, you know, I'm sure there's a few different insurance companies that are in that space that do that. Is that, is that how that works? Yeah. So when you join a Medicare Advantage plan, I think the easiest way to think about it is it almost replaces your Medicare cards, you actually end up leaving your Medicare card at home and you show your Aetna card or your United Healthcare card or whatever company it ends up being. Gotcha. And they're responsible for all Part A, all Part B services. And then they'll usually include coverage for prescription drugs, mm-hmm. which isn't included in Medicare. And then it will usually include things that aren't normally covered by Medicare, like dental, vision, hearing aids, stuff like that, that is still part of your health. Okay. but it isn't covered by original Medicare. Gotcha. And is there an extra cost to having the supplement plan or a Medicare Advantage, I should say? Um, it can be. In Southern California, we have a lot of people, so we have a lot of competition within the insurance companies. Mm-hmm. So most of the plans are, are little to no cost. 
Okay. They can have a small cost if you end up going with the PPO, but usually it's not not any more than $100. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And so I guess I'm, I imagine behind the scenes what's happening there is the insurance company is, is um, negotiated a compensation for Medicare, and, and, and that's the, the circumvention there for that? Yeah, without getting too far into the weeds on that, they are paid a monthly amount. So uh-huh. simplified terms, think that they get $1,000 a month. Mm-hmm. Instead of Medicare paying those claims for you, they're just paying the insurance company $1,000 a month to now provide you insurance. And in certain cases, contract with medical systems, build networks and facilities so that you can use those. So Part of that money is also, however more efficient they are and a better job they do, they actually get more money on top of that to provide benefits that aren't covered by Medicare. So the dentals and the visions and the hearing aids. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're able to offer that. They get a little bit more money on top of what Medicare thinks they should get. So that way they can provide a full, like one package. One comprehensive package exactly. that somebody can have for their health care at, at minimal cost. Yes. Okay, perfect. So that that's plan A, B, and then the advantage plan. Um, now, I've heard about, you know, plan D, prescription, or I, I hear people talk about the donut or things like that. <laughs> yeah. So give everybody a little under it, because I think that becomes like, almost once you see A, B, and C, you start to wrap your head around it, you get the concept, and then you hear about plan, you know, D and prescription. So, so expand on that. Yeah. Part D, I mean, D for drugs is the simplest part of part D. So it can be quite confusing. So I'll try to try to make this as simple as possible, but prescription drug plans, they come in two different ways. Either you can get it from your Medicare Advantage plan. Those are called Medicare Advantage prescription drug plans or MAPD, or you're going to get it from what we call a PDP, a individual prescription drug plan. Got it. For the individual plan, you will pay a monthly amount. It can range from 50 cents a month all the way up to $170 a month, just depending on the prescriptions that you take at that time. So when you do turn 65 or come off employer coverage and you have to figure out which drug plan to go through, it can be really daunting because every drug plan, they have a different formulary or list of covered drugs. They can classify drugs in different categories and they can price them in whatever way they kind of feel like. Hmm. They have to go through a set rules of, they have to cover at least two drugs in every category. They can't charge too much, but everything's gonna be different. So that's where Part D can get confusing. That's where working with somebody like myself or any other type of agent to go through all of the plans in your area to make sure that your medications are covered and covered at the best rate. Yeah, I'd imagine if you're somebody who is either in the business or it has retired and, and they may be dating doctors and they yeah. may be on five or six or seven different medications, planning ahead on Medicare really helps, you know, doing your homework when you're 64, not when you're 65. Um, makes a lot of sense in this case. So enrollment, uh, you know, since we touched upon age there, um, I, I know there's a window of enrollment around your 65th birthday. So give us the details of that. Yeah. So you have your initial enrollment period. So it's a seven month window. It starts three months before the month you turn 65. It includes the month you turn 65 and it includes the three months after. So I always encourage people to try and get ahead of it in those first three months. So you can apply for Medicare if there's any issues. We are working with a government agency, so things can be a little slow sometimes. So if you get on top of it, you give yourself that grace period to make sure everything goes as smoothly as possible. And during that seven-month window is also when you get to choose a Medicare Advantage or a prescription drug plan. So you want to make sure you just allow yourself enough time to apply for apply to Medicare with Social Security, and then also apply for whatever other coverage you need and be able to go through all of your options. So let's say if you're in the first month of your window, Mm -hmm. let's say you're three months before your 65th birthday, you're kind of early in the window. Um, If you apply, do you start the following month or does it start when you hit age 65? That's a good question. So when you apply for Medicare in the first month, you'll start on the first of the month you turn 65. The only time that's not true is if your birthday is on the first of the month, you will start the first of the prior month. Oh, okay. Yeah. So those those babies born on the first of the month get an extra month. Yeah, they get an extra month in Medicare. All right. Well, 
I was born de- deep in the month, the 18th. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the costs because now you know you, there's Part A, B, the Medicare Advantage. Um, then one thing we haven't talked upon, which we'll get into this too, is yeah. that if if some of the coverages in in original Medicare or even Medicare Advantage. Uh, or your medications aren't covered, you might want to consider it a supplement. Yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit about how much Medicare costs, and then use that as a way to kind of transition into the comparison between what Medicare offers and maybe a cost of a supplement plan. Okay. Um, so you know, Part A you mentioned doesn't cost anything, um, and then you mentioned Part B is outpatient. It's one hundred and seventy four dollars a month. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you said Part C, for the most part, can be nothing, but it depends where you live. You said it depends on the, the cost of medical care in the area that you live in, can kind of gauge on uh, Medicare Advantage on what the cost could be from there. Um, and then the Part D plan, what's the cost around Part D? Like, how, how does that work? It can range greatly. Like I said, it really depends on the prescriptions that you take. Mm-hmm. If you take some cheaper generic drugs, then, you know, there's plans that are 40 cents a month or a couple dollars a month that might do for you. If you have some really expensive brand name drugs, it could be, you know, $100 a month. That's why when we look at the average, it's about $59 per month. There's a wide range, but it's good to know you can plan for at least 60 bucks a month okay. and then kind of gauge it from there after we take a look at all of your medications through all of the options. Got it. Okay. So then, um, so it sounds like to me that the, if, if somebody were to, um, have Medicare, just whether it's the original Medicare or Medicare Advantage, they should be in their mind thinking to themselves, especially if they're in Southern California, that their out-of-pocket cost is going to be somewhere around 200 bucks a month, just to ballpark it. Um, and then if they have sp- prescription needs, might be a little bit higher than that. Um, so, you know, th- what's the difference between that and, like, if you get a supplement plan, are they pretty – comparable in the expenses or, you know, give, give me kind of the, the, the difference between Medicare, Medicare supplement, the costs, the benefits, the, the, the upsides and the downsides. Sure. Okay. So when we talk about Medicare supplements, I always like to make the distinction that there's either Medicare Advantage or Medicare supplement plans. You oh. choose one or the other. A lot of people always ask me, you know, can I do a supplement on top of the Medicare Advantage or can I do both? It's one or the other. So if you don't choose Medicare Part C, you'd want to choose a Medicare supplement or people call them Medigap plans. Okay. So with A and B or original Medicare, you can go to any physician in the country that accepts Medicare with no referrals. So it's kind of like ultimate freedom. A lot of people say, is this a PPO? Well, it's even more free than a PPO because you have no network restrictions. Mm. If you want to retain that right to go to whatever physician you want, Then you keep A and B as your first insurance, and then you get a Medigap plan to fill in the coverages that Medicare leaves over. Like I said before, Medicare is not comprehensive, A and B, so you need something to help with the cost. So the Medicare supplement will come in, pay the costs that are left over by Medicare after Medicare pays its share. Mm -hmm. And for this, you're going to pay a premium, right? It's like a lot of things in life. If you want the freedom to go where you want, you're going to pay more money for it, right? right? So Medicare supplements at age 65 for the highest level of coverage usually is $130 to $140 a month, depending on where you live, and it does get more expensive each year you get older. You can expect for even numbers $10 per year more, so $140, $150, $160, so on and so on. Well, so it sounds like from a cost perspective, whether you have traditional Medicare, uh, the Advantage plan, or you have traditional Medicare and a supplement that you add on, the cost is not too different between all of them. It's just the matter of what benefits that you need as an individual. So so what I'm getting at there is that a lot of people go into the Medicare decision making with stress like oh yeah. my gosh I'm gonna make a mistake if I if I choose regular Medicare with a supplement plan then I don't like it can I go back or vice versa if I start with a supplement plan and regular Medicare you know uh, you know go back and forth now I know it makes a difference right because I think the supplement plans the cost of them like you mentioned gets more expensive as you get older yeah um, 
So tell me how that works if somebody changes their mind, starts on one and goes to the other. Like, like if there were a better route to choose, like, <laughs> you know, like give me what people need to know about that. Yeah, so it can be a little bit complicated switching between the two. For Medicare Advantage, switching is really simple. You have your window every year from October 15th to December 7th called the annual enrollment period. That's mm. when you can make changes and it's effective for the first of the year. Medicare Supplements, they really only have one enrollment window. That's when you first turn 65 and the six months following, whenever you start Part B, you have guarantee issue into any Medicare supplement you want. Ooh, that's important because they're so at, at, in that window only around your 65th birthday is what you're saying. Or, or in that when you start Part B. Or when you start Part yeah. B, you've basically guaranteed issuance. Like they don't look at your medical record. But after that, what happens if you don't? Outside take- of that six month window, say, you know, you decided five years in that you wanted to switch to a supplement, mm-hmm. you may have to go through medical underwriting. So that means they're going to look at your health history for the past five to seven years. They'll contact your doctors, and they can deny you or raise your rates for pretty much any reason they want. Sure. So if you're taking too many heart medications, if you had a scare a couple of years ago, they don't want to accept the risk, they can deny you. All right. So another reason to prepare ahead. There's no, another reason to get together with somebody like you to weigh out all these different options, um, because if you do need to make a change, if it's the wrong change, it could it could be a negative compensation to you. you yeah, could. it could be. And there are ways around it. So I don't want to scare people with that sure. one. A lot of times people use that as a fear tactic. Mm-hmm. But that is another important thing to work with a broker is because we have ways to get around that medical underwriting that isn't always available to the public. Sure. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Perfect. Well, let's wrap it up with this is is because this is going to be the biggest question most people have is like, okay, great. I understand the, the basic concepts here, you know, Chris and Colby, but, you know, Medicare supplement versus advantage, if, if I'm really trying to make that decision, because that decision is the one that could maybe financially affect me later if I change. Yeah. What questions should I be asking? Um, that Let's go into that. Okay. So the biggest one for me is always budget and now and always in the future. You, maybe you can afford that Medicare supplement now, but can you afford it when it's three times the price for two people in 10, 15 years? Okay. And can you afford that for the rest of your life? Sure. So that's a big consideration when choosing a Medicare supplement plan. And I have this little anecdotal story I really like to tell. So my uncle chose a Medicare supplement plan when he turned 65. He had a bunch of different doctors he went to, mm-hmm. and he had multiple primary cares. They were all diagnosing him for different things, giving him medications, and he assumed that they were all communicating, and they are all giving him these different medications for the same thing, counteracting each other, and it wasn't working out for him. And so it was also getting incredibly expensive for him, the medications, the supplement, all this stuff. As he got older, it got more and more complex and he couldn't afford it anymore. His health was taking turns. So a Medicare supplement plan just wasn't right for him. He wasn't managing his health care. He couldn't afford it. And it just wasn't the right choice for him where he really should have gone to a managed care plan from the beginning. So that way all these things weren't happening. So there's money is a big consideration when we, when we first look at this stuff. Sure. Sure. All right. Especially if the, the premiums can change in the future or things can your health can change, whatever it may be. Yeah. All right. And then medications, is that a big thing that people should be concerned about when they're looking at supplement versus uh, Medicare advantage? Yes, and it's becoming especially true with the changes coming in 2025 to Part D. So prescription drugs are already really complicated, and a lot of them are very expensive. So we really have to consider which plan you're going into and which option. A lot of the times, Medicare Advantage plans, they're getting a lot more money than the 40 cents they're getting for the the prescription drug plan. So they can have better coverage than compared to an individual plan. So... It's really important to consider which one you're going to go with for the future and now if you are on expensive medications. Got it. So if you're considering Medicare Advantage or a supplement, make sure to you know really think about your budget today and the future. Think about the medications that you're on because you're right. That medications are a political hot button too nowadays, yeah. and that could change in the future. Um, so outside of those two things, what else should questions should somebody be asking? The other thing, I, one of the main questions I ask when I meet with people first is, 
who are your doctors, and is there a particular hospital that you want access to or a facility or something that's really important to you? Sometimes you have a surgeon that did your back surgery 20 years ago, and that's the only guy that knows your back. Well, you don't want to lose access to them by choosing a Medicare Advantage plan that has a narrow network, and that doctor doesn't accept it. So looking at your list of doctors and what facilities you need access to is the most important thing to me because that's who's going to take care of you. Sure. So this is very similar to like if you had a job change while you were working and your insurance changes, you need to look at, hey, are my old doctors on the new insurance plan? So this is very similar just on, in, on a higher government level in essence. Yeah, basically, exactly. Okay, interesting. All right, so so knowing what doctors you have, prescriptions, uh, your budget, what's, what's the last thing people should be asking themselves or uh, one additional thing they should be asking themselves? Yeah, and it's, it's, of course, do you have any particular health conditions, right? Do you have diabetes? Do you have a certain heart disease? Do you have any other disease that requires special treatment and special medications? is very important because maybe you have specialists that you need to go see and that best specialist is in a different state or a different county. So maybe you want access to them. There are special Medicare Advantage plans designed for people with certain diseases like diabetes, heart disease, emphysema that help you manage that condition and reduce the medication costs for you, which can be really high for people with certain diseases. So. Mm-hmm. That's also a really important consideration to make sure that it's going to fit in with all these other things, right? It's going to fit in with your budget. It's going to fit in with all of your medications and your doctors. Do you need special attention? Interesting. All right. Well, I appreciate your time today. You know, I I want to wrap it up. Before we wrap it up, I want to just, you mentioned something about next year. And so I I want to ask you one question for our clients and and people that have been on Medicare for for many years. And they look at something like this and they go, "Ah, Chris Colby, I've been on Medicare for 10 years. I know everything I need to know about it. What's changing in 2025 that somebody may need to know about that's been on the program for a while? Yeah, and keeping it brief without going into too much detail, the Inflation Reduction Act, it's taking away the donut hole. So if you know what the donut hole is, that's going to be really big for you. And they're putting a cap on medication spending of $2,000 for the year. Wow. So in the past, it's been much higher. Yeah. It's been a lot higher. Yeah, you can hit that cap pretty fast. Yeah. $2,000 $2,000 compared to what it was is amazing. Um, Medicare is also going to be starting to negotiate drugs themselves. Mm-hmm. So we could see big drops in prices for really expensive medications that people could barely afford in the past. So hopefully it's all positive changes, wow. but we're, we'll see as it comes for next year. Yeah, well, you heard it, heard it here, folks. Uh, if you're already on Medicare and you want to know more about the changes that are happening, reach out to us. If you want to know how to find us, we've got our website, quiverfinancial.com. We also have uh, our YouTube channel that you can subscribe to. If you're watching it, please subscribe and give us a little like. And you can also find us on Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, Chris, I want to appreciate the time, or say thank you for the time that you've spent with us. Um, we're definitely going to have you back to talk more in, in depth on some of these things to get a little more comprehensive in the conversation. But for now, we'll wrap it up, and I appreciate your time. Thank you, Kobe. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.